About 20 minutes in, we're dealt pocket aces under the gun plus one. I raised to 15. The hijack calls, the button three bets to 65. This is a dream scenario. The button only had about 600 to start the hand. I'm wondering what's the best way to get all of it. Four bet jamming is overkill. I make a much smaller four bet to 150. It's an amount that's too small for the button to fold to. And then he'll have a two to one stack to pot ratio if he calls. It's not a large amount. Maybe he'll feel obligated to five bet rip it. The hijack folds. The button is contemplating what to do. It doesn't take him too long to decide though. Oh, and? Oh. Oh. Let's get a sweat here. <laughs> right away, we stack an opponent with our sixes full of aces to beat an ace king offsuit hand that plays the board. It's a nice way to begin, and we're not done with aces either. One orbit later, we're under the gun plus one, and we pick him up again. This time, the straddle's on. I raised to 30. The hijack calls. The button three bets to 90. I don't know what's going on, but I could have used some of this in Austin. I was only dealt pocket aces once in three live stream sessions spanning about 25 hours. I've already been dealt aces twice here, just over a half hour. Wait, gets even better though. The big blind is about to make a play. Squeeze time. <laughs> I've never been so excited for squeeze time in my life. The big blind picked a fantastic time to 4-bet to 390 with only 2,035 total. His name is Mike. He said earlier that he wanted to make the vlog. Mike is certainly going to accomplish that. I find myself in another terrific spot. We're going to apply the same principles here as the last hand we went over as we almost min 5-bet to 800. Whatever Mike cold 4-bet to 390 with, I doubt he'll want to fold for 410 more. Plus, the fact that he announced it was squeeze time may make him feel like I could somehow be 5-betting light, even though that'll never be the case with a caller and a 3-better behind me. So you mean you actually had a good early positioning open raise? I have the best one. The hijack and the button fold. The action's back on the big blind. He's a sticky player who makes the call, leaving himself with about 3 fourths of a pot size bet left in his stack. The flop comes jack 10 10 with two hearts. I suppose it's possible that we're up against pocket jacks, but there's a better chance we're up against ace king, pocket kings, or queens. I feel much better about this flop given that we have the ace of hearts. The big blind checks. Our goal is to make sure that we keep those worst hands in, so even though we probably have the best hand, I announce a tiny bet at 200 to elicit a shove or keep ace king in when the big blind may only have four outs max. This sizing does the trick. Who in the Okay. okay, I gotta get lucky. It's good to hear. <laughs> okay, oh, you got one of my own. Oh, uh, two feet? Yeah. yeah. The opponent has king queen offsuit. He flops an open ended straight draw, but he can't hit an ace or we'll make a full house. The opponent picks up a few more outs on the turn as he pairs his queen. It's looking bleak for him though because only two queens are left in the deck, and we picked up a flush draw, so only three non hard nines will give him a straight that's good. The river is the eight of clubs. We stack another opponent with aces. It's a massive pot of more than 800 big blinds that we take from Mike. It's actually one of the biggest two five pots that I've ever won. Mike's wish comes true, I'm making the vlog, but it comes with a price. All right, Mike, <laughs> you're in there. Chris, I don't you're wanna be in this fucking video. <laughs> Mike's a great guy who typically plays much larger games and just loves creating action. I appreciate it. Feels so good to win some hands and run well in a cash game session after weeks of being in a drought. We're somehow already up over 2,500. Next, we pick up Pocket Kings under the gun plus two with the straddle on. Under the gun plus one is first to act. He raises to 30. If I three bet while I'm second to act, it'll telegraph the strength of our hand. We may as well play it face up. Since there's been a lot of three and four betting anyway, I get a little creative and just flat hoping that we can put in a back four bet if someone behind us re raises. Our plan doesn't quite work out how we drew it up. The big blind calls, Mike calls, and the under the gun straddle. We've essentially turned our pocket kings into deuces as we go four ways to the flop, but at least we're in position. Now, what you want to do with deuces is drill a set on an ace high board. That's exactly what we do. The flop comes ace king nine rainbow. We have about the sneakiest set that we'll ever have. I'm glad that I just flattered the initial pre flop raise after all. 
checks to the under the gun plus one player, he bets 50. There's really not much to be afraid of other than maybe Queen Jack or Jack 10 making a straight. I call to keep as many players in as possible. The big blind folds, but Mike calls to close the action. Three of us are still in. The turn is another nine, giving us a full house. If Mike has a nine, we could make piles of money. It seems that he might because he takes the initiative and leads for 250. It's almost a pot sized bet. Under the gun plus one folds. The under the gun player just put out a massive bet. He's probably drawing extremely slim, if not dead. We don't want him going anywhere, plus we have position on him to make sure that the river doesn't check through anyway. I just call one more time. If the opponent's on a draw, I hope he hits it. The river is the three of clubs, so the backdoor flush draw gets there. The opponent has no quit in him. He cocks back and fires for 800. I hope he has a smaller boat or hit runner runner clubs. Flying preflop couldn't have worked out more perfecter. Mike only has 1170 on top of his giant river bet. Let's see if he wants to play for everything. Come on. We tried to get greedy with an ace. Yeah. Tried to get greedy against a good player. I shouldn't do that. Okay. I had a very, very sneaky hand. Looks like Mike figured we both had an ace and would be chopping with the two nines out there and the king kicker. The issue for him is that the king was not a kicker for us. One more enormous pot comes our way in the first hour and a half. We're already winning over $4,000 out of the gate. In this one, we've got pocket threes under the gun. I raised to 15. The button calls, the small blind calls as well. We're going three ways to the flop. It comes king, king, three with two spades. I immediately hang up the phone with the sales representative from Bass Pro Shops after telling him, thanks, but I've already got a boat. The small blind checks. I put in a sneaky check. The button also checks. The turn is the eight of clubs. This excites the small blind. He bets 15. It's time for us to make our move. I raise it 50. That's too much for the button. He folds. The small blind isn't deterred. He calls for 35 more. Maybe he's got trips. The river is another three. We make quad threes for the second time today. I've never made quads twice in the same session before. It's pretty amazing. Small blind checks. He only has 380 left in the stack. If he has a king, he's never folding to a jam. If he has a missed flush draw, he can't call a bet anyway. I rip it in. Small blind apparently has air and folds immediately. I did river quads there. Oh, wow. there it is. We win 2200 after playing seven and a half hours, though poker isn't over for the trip. 